Hey, welcome back to The Dive. Today on the show, we're excited to welcome back the silver guru himself, David Morgan from The Morgan Report. David is going to share with us his thoughts about what's happening in the cryptoverse with the whole FTX debacle, his central bank digital currency concerns, Nancy Pelosi's investing strategy, Trump back on Twitter, the long-term consequences of all the U.S. stimulus over the last few years, as well as what he sees happening with gold and silver next. Hey, David, welcome back to The Dive. Hi, Cassandra. It's good to be back. It's so good to have you back. Okay, so David, let's start with what's happening in the crypto world. What are you watching right now? And do you think that we're in the early stages of contagion? Okay, I want to just digress a bit, Cassandra, because this is very important. Uh, Almost a year ago, I think it was about 10 months ago, I started a series on my blog for free for everyone called The Crypto Conspiracy. And I call it a conspiracy because I don't want any blowback. No, that's just a conspiracy because that's sort of the go-to phrase for people that have no ability to critically think. That's my opinion. So I started off talking about what was wrong with the crypto world and to be very, very careful of it and that Bitcoin was overvalued and that it was probably a good time to take some profits, at least some, if not all. I use the word some because I'm conservative and I'm free market. People think Bitcoin's going to 125,000, which at that time, everyone was saying almost anyone that was pro-Bitcoin saying it's going to 125,000, you know, so it's only halfway there. Well, Actually, John Perez and myself called the top. So I've been skeptical about the whole crypto world for some time. Not to say that there aren't some good ideas and some good people and some great you know, ingenuity that's going on and the blockchain is here to stay and all that I'm firm about. So what I'm watching right now is what really was predicted by John Perez, myself, Mike Adams, uh, Coffeezilla, Kurt Wuchert. Um, Cyrus Parsa, uh, Mike McKibben, many of these names I'm throwing out are people that I interviewed one-on-one on my crypto conspiracy series outlining that there were flaws in the system and a lot of it was more hype than reality. So what I'm watching is kind of what I forecast. And it's unfortunate because a lot of people got sucked into the crypto mantra that all you have to do is put some money in the crypto space, live in your basement, you'll never have to work again in a Lamborghini's around the corner. And that's not the way the world works. It can work that way in a Ponzi scheme for a while. I mean, this uh, Bankman character, you know, didn't drive a Lamborghini, only drove a Toyota Corolla. I mean, that's his badge of honor, that he's just such a nice guy that he doesn't waste the money on you know, a Lamborghini. Heck no, he was too busy funneling it off into his friends and political relationships. So I'm watching it unravel. It's what was predicted. And I'm not sitting here with a bunch of glee because I hate to see people get ripped off, but I gave them a warning. I said, get out or at least take part of your money off the table and watch out because there's hard times ahead in the crypto space. And here we are. Furthermore, and I know it's a follow-up question, but um, what's happened at FTX is not as, as you said, is the contagion. Yes, it is. It's going to touch into a lot of other areas. So now I have to follow up. So I'll give it back to you, Cassandra. But I wanted to get that out on the record because people are going to say, well, you know, that's just David's opinion. No, I've got 25, six or seven interviews over the last year regarding not just FTX, which is just a subset of the big picture, but the big picture in total on why there are problems in this arena. Why do you think uh, that the media was trying to make Sam Bankman-Fried out to be the golden boy of crypto? Because the media is controlled by the money power elite. I mean, really, if you're honest, we know that the TV television program is to tell you a vision, to program you. And this is the mainstream media. Go to the look up what the Mockingbird Uh, media is really all about. You look at the CIA infiltration into the media, you look at the CIA infiltration in the movies, you look at how Hollywood is actually set up. I mean, if you really do a modicum of research and you really are objective and you look for the truth, you're going to find it. And the truth is that 
they are bought and paid for, they are controlled, and they are meant to make a message appealable to the masses and those few that are able to think outside the box or critically think that don't come on board, they're just part of doing business. The rest are programmed with propaganda day in and day out to believe whatever the mainstream says. Do you think that the celebrities who endorse FTX should face serious consequences? Yes, I think the same rules, laws, and uh, pl applicability applies to everybody. I mean, when you are in this country, the United States of America, the same rules, the same laws, and the same consequences are across the board. It doesn't matter if you're a president or a janitor or <clears throat> you know, laborer or a white-collar worker. It doesn't matter. The same rules and accountability apply. So it doesn't matter if you're a celebrity. It doesn't matter if you're rich. It doesn't matter if you're poor. You're going to get the same treatment. Obviously, that is an inaccurate statement these days. If you look at people with a lot of money, somehow or other, they always seem to either not even get in front of uh, a hearing or where a normal person will be put in jail, for example. Normal meaning someone that doesn't have you know, celebrity status or a lot of money behind them. And they're going to pay a different price than someone that does the same crime or the same actions that has money or has political power. And this is wrong. And it's against everything that we are supposedly maintaining when all of these Congress critters, senators, all the political class swears an oath to the Constitution to uphold it for, for everyone and to defend it against all foreign and domestic intruders. And yet this is something that's just mumbling words and hardly ever held by anybody to be uh, accountable to. So it's very sad. But the pendulum swings both ways. And I think it's probably swung as far left as it's going to for a while. I think it's going to start swinging back to the right. Hopefully it doesn't swing too far to the right, which is a possibility. And, you know, I'm, I guess, in the middle. I mean, I don't want to classify myself, but I am independent thinker, free market thinker, and also um, tolerant within the realm of uh, a high morality. I am intolerant of what's immoral. And it's immoral to treat people in the same nation that you promise to treat equally, unequally. That's immoral. Mm -hmm. Now, do you think the events surrounding FTX will result in a new series of regulations? Absolutely. And to go in the conspiracy side, and I know you let me, perhaps it was a setup. Perhaps it was a controlled demolition where Hey, we're setting this guy up. We're going to, you know, launder money through Ukraine back into the Democratic platform. And, you know, he's going to have to go down. He's the fall guy. But when we come after him, he'll let's make sure he's in the Bahamas and he can get to du Dubai and not be extradited back to the United States or whatever they have planned. I'm just making that up. I'm just giving you the possibility that you must think in that direction as a possibility, which means that it could be a setup to get massive regulation. Everyone that got sucked into the crypto situation, and again, not all of them are bad, not all of them are going down, but it's going to disrupt the crypto arena for, I think, a couple of years. Anyway, it is a great way to say problem, reaction, solution. Problem, central banks control our money. Reaction, let's make cryptocurrencies. Cryptocurrencies are corrupt solution. We will be in charge of cryptocurrencies. And central bank digital currencies that are regulated are your only way. Let's go. Ha, ha, ha. So that's what I'm looking for. How closely are you watching Heather, David? You know, that's kind of from the start of the crypto conspiracy. I mean, John and I went through Tether again and again and again. And... Um, most people that were watching a channel like yours would know about the Wolf of Wall Street. Uh, I think it's Jordan Belford. And he did a video calling Tether a scam straight out. I don't know if it's a scam, but I am very concerned about Tether not being what they say they are and basically doing a Federal Reserve, you know, creating something out of nothing, which is, you know, my main premise that you can't live that lie forever. So I think Tether has got real problems. And Tether is the main stable coin used by the crypto world. So if it starts to falter, I think you're going to see FTX compounded. 
because without a stable coin, you don't have a cryptocurrency system. I'm not saying it's going to fall apart completely. I'm saying I'm very concerned. And if it were me, I would have minimum exposure uh, to the crypto space until I was certain that um, you know things were on the up and up. And that does not necessarily mean that the regulators have regulated all these independents out of business, which probably will happen, but you've got to use some discretion. So you've got to check your risk reward ratio. And I think there's a lot of risk in Tether that most people don't even think about. And I've been, uh, you know, I've got the uh, flaming comments and, you know, what is it? STFU, you know, all that kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, I talked about it. I didn't even talk about it. One of my interviews with Mike McKibben, he talked about a back door. And I got a lot of flack for that. And most people realized it wasn't me that said it. Mike had said it. And most people were very objective and said, you know, David's guest is just plain wrong. There can't be impossible. Doesn't know what the heck they're talking about. You know, just, the, the, you know, flame throwing. Yet the truth is there's a back door in FTX. Wow, isn't that a miracle? So there's a lot to be sorted out here. But Tether is probably my greatest fear, and I can prove it. If you go back to the Crypto Conspiracy episode one through four, you'll hear a lot of talk about Tether and our concerns on it. Why do you think that CBDCs are so concerning? Because the, the amount of people on the internet that are not uh, mass hypnotized by the mainstream propaganda is gaining every day. I mean, if you look at some of my friends on, let's say, some of the major social media platforms, they have bigger followers than CNN. I mean, you take somebody like Mark Dice, who I've never met. I'd love to have lunch with him sometime. But, you know, you look at what Mark's done with a laptop in his kitchen and the amount of power that that man has by speaking out, telling the truth and waking people up. So this is what they fear the most because the truth is very powerful. And if you can speak truth to power, they start to lose their power uh, because it's based on false reality. It's based on propaganda, which is just a way of convincing you that what's real isn't or what isn't real is. So that is gaining momentum all the time. And this is uh, great because to really have a constitutional republic, to have a system where the individual is treated as more as as important as the collective, where the majority doesn't rule, where the rule of law is what rules equally toward everyone, as I said earlier. That's a pretty sound system. Unfortunately, we've lost it or certainly close to losing it entirely. And we have the ability with this waking up process that's gaining more and more momentum to take it back. And again, I'll repeat, that's why I think we're going to see this pendulum start to swing back toward the right, and hopefully there could be some balance between the two because living in an extreme is never healthy for anybody, whether it's extreme diet or extreme exercise or extreme, you know, whatever. You want to have balance in life. That's where you are, find the most happiness and that's where you find the most fulfillment because you've got to have up for down. You've got to have right with left. You've got to have, you know, black and white and all of that. And I think anyone with understanding of how the world really works is attuned to that. And this is, again, kind of what I've been striving for, an equal platform of a monetary system that's flat out across the board, fair to everyone, worldwide. What a concept. <laughs> Nancy Pelosi announced that she will step down from her active leadership role with the Democrats. Do you think Pelosi will go down in history books as the greatest insider trader of all time? Absolutely, without a doubt. I think she's going to get right up there with Madoff, although she did it legally, or should I say lawfully, or one, one term or the other. I mean, it's, it's, it's legal, but it's certainly not morally correct. I mean, this is just front-running people. And, you know, these Congress critters and, you know, the political class at large, there are some exceptions, basically are in the same state where they were at the end of the Roman Empire. Rather than serving the people, they're serving the people. In other words, they're ripping off the public uh, treasury to the best of their ability for their own selfish reasons, rather than being a true statesman or stateswoman where they actually have the greater good at heart. It's interesting to me that um, 
so many people are able to fall for the propaganda and not see through it. The problem, I guess, modern to my own self is I woke up at such an early age and saw so much alternative media back in the early days. It was physical newsletters from great thinkers that didn't always get it right, but they certainly would open up your mind to critically think about issues about is politics real or is it all stage? I mean, as Eleanor Roosevelt said, very little happens in politics by accident. Think about that. How much of this stuff is just planned ahead of time, but portrayed and acted out so well that this kabuki theater is believed by the masses. Think about it. Now, Trump just got reinstated on Twitter. Do you think it's only a matter of time until he hops back on? You know, I don't know. I'm not a big Trumpster or... You know, I'm not big on politics, as anyone knows that follows my work. But it doesn't, but the principles that were set up really, I think, were as idealistic as we've ever seen in human history that's recorded as we've been told. I mean, there could be an alternative history that we're really not that aware of. But as we've been told, certainly it's very idealistic and having this idea that uh, we've got God given rights secured to us by a government. The function of government is to secure our God-given rights. What a concept that we have these inalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And those are innate from our creator and the government's there to protect that. I mean, that's a concept that everyone can identify with. The problem is that when we said all men are created equal, we didn't mean everybody. And that's really, really unfortunate. And it's a huge error. And those of us that are, you know, in the same category, whatever we want to place me and know that. We know that to the depth of our being. But it doesn't mean on round two that we don't get it right. And when we say everyone, we mean everyone. And so the idealistic opportunity that we have ahead of us really can be made very simple. All we need to do is go back to the basic principles and get rid of so much of this stuff that really isn't part of the mandate of the protection secured, given by God and secured by the Constitution. Whether or not that will come about is probably extremely idealistic on my hand, but it's something to shoot for. And going one step lower than that, at least if we could get the monetary system back under control where the people had the monetary power, then by our purchases, we could have a lot to say without even speaking a word verbally, just by the amount of money, that true money that we spent in the marketplace would help to dictate you know, better food, better water, better air, better transportation, you know, all those things, because when you're on a legitimate monetary system, you have a high moral standard that everybody has to adhere to equally. Now, given all the monetary stimulus in the U.S. over the last 18 months, what do you think are the long term consequences of these Fed policies? Failure of the system, and they know it. And it's just a question now of how quickly it'll happen. And I don't give it more than about a year and a half. And yeah, I've been wrong. Before, I mean, honestly, I didn't think it would take this long before we'd have the position where we we are now. And uh, it does not make me joyful at all. But uh, you can't live a lie forever. And the lie is that we could create something out of nothing. We create these pieces of paper. We we'll pretend they're valuable, and we could get oil from other countries. We could get goods and services from other countries, and we could even build a. a another empire based on this lie for a while. I mean, if you look at, you know, where I was uh, teetering on, you know, this should be happening sooner. And then it dawned on me rather quickly. I'm a pretty good thinker. <laughs> I think I am. It's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. This game is going to go for a lot longer. Why? Because the Ponzi scheme has got 1.4 billion Chinese that can enter the Ponzi. And they did. And what did they do? They built up like the Industrial Revolution on steroids. I mean, China went into overdrive. And of course, they, in a corrupt system where you can get something for nothing for a while, they overbuilt. I mean, they've got ghost cities. They've got situations where, you know, no one's living in these apartments. And not that you don't make mistakes in a sound money system, but they're much, much fewer. There's a lot more... Uh, ability to look at the reality of what you're borrowing the money to do uh, when you're in an honest system than when you are in a you know free money system. But we print whatever we want, doesn't matter, do whatever we want. Lots of corruption at the top, and that's been portrayed out through all of history. It happened in Rome. It's happened in many countries of recent date. I mean, in the book, The Silver Manifesto, Chris Marchese and I wrote 
we point out many countries that have had, you know, destructive inflations in recent times. It's just that you don't hear about it from the mainstream press. Silver inventories in the LBMA and the COMEX are thinning out. Based on the recent data, what impact do you think that this will have on silver prices? Well, you know, <laughs> it, it, yeah, this question is supply and demand. And, you know, I mean, the demand is so high, the supply is dwindling rapidly. So the prices have to go higher. I mean, a third grader could tell you that. And yet the way the system is maintained through management forces with the algorithms and the bullion banks, uh, I do think the price will break higher at some point. But it's unfortunate that there is so much, um, I'll call it paper silver out there in the in the world that is has still the ability to really distort what should be a free market. I mean, all these commodities, all these markets should really be free and none of them are. Uh, and you take the most important market of all, and that's what we call money, I'll call it currency. And the interest rate is the price of money, the price of currency. And that should be determined by the market. So if the money is val if money's valuable, you'd have a high interest rate. It costs you a lot to get something that's valuable. If something's worthless, you've got zero interest rates. It doesn't matter. It's not worth anything. It doesn't cost anything. Why should it cost anything? It's not valuable. So now the Fed has gone from basically money's not valuable to, oh, yes, it is. We're going to raise interest rates. And of course, this distorts all the markets or actually brings them back in line in my study view, meaning that a lot of this stuff that's got overextended actually gets repriced to a more realistic price. But there's a lot to be said. My take is that silver is still the Achilles heel of the entire financial system. The last thing that the powers that be want to do is see silver break free. And um, we're in a position where that could happen. The Silver Institute, Institute just put out something late last week that said that the deficit in silver for this year will be 200 million ounces. There's a deficit once before in my lifetime between 1990 and 2005, which was 1.5 billion ounces in uh, a 15-year period. So the average drawdown of above-ground stockpiles was 100 million ounces annually for 15 years. If, and this is not, in my opinion, going to happen, but if we were in a position now where it was drawn down at 200 million ounces or twice the rate of 1990 to 2005, we would get to a squeeze a lot faster for two reasons. One is double the amount of offtake. Two, there's a solar industry which, which takes 10% of the market, and that's increasing. And lastly, the awareness of silver as an investment and a good way to preserve your wealth has reached an, uh, a level of, of, of knowledge that was not existent 20, you know, 20 years ago when it was me and a few others that uh, were, you know, pounding the silver horn, so to speak. Now, if you type in silver in like a mainstream social media channel, you're going to pop up, you know, 10, 20, 50, 100 different, you know, maybe not 100, but several commentators that either talk silver or have a comment on it or whatever, which is great. The more that people understand that they have the ability to take the power of money in their own hands, the better off we'll all be. Now, there will be some distortions getting there. And one of the distortions is these control freaks that are trying to keep the price of silver relatively low because they don't want anyone to know the truth that silver, again, is probably the best place to put money or your savings to basically not only preserve wealth, but perhaps make you wealthy when it's repriced. What about gold? What's your outlook on gold right now? Uh, gold is... Um, you know, the big brother of silver, but it's more establishment. I mean, the banks don't covet gold. They don't make silver a tier one asset. Gold is really pretty established. And I'm pro gold, but I don't like the idea of, you know, he who owns the gold makes the rules. If the banks end up with most of the gold, make the rules. And the rules are central bank digital currency. And oh yeah, it's gold backed. And you have to stand in line and get your you know, as a metaphor, your tattoo or your iris scan or your DNA blood sample or whatever it is for your real ID, Cassandra. I mean, after all, we have to know it's you. 
oh, we have to know what you buy and when you buy it, who you bought it with and how far you traveled to get there. And, you know, if you already have one of those purses, why are you buying another one? No, we're not going to let that purchase happen. I mean, this sounds bizarre, but that's the world we're entering into. Whether it goes that far or not, we don't know, but we certainly know the technology is there to do that. So I'm a bit remiss on um, the gold only. I've been a big advocate for, you know, my entire career on a bimetallic standard or a trimetallic standard where real money is into people's hands and you can digitize it. I mean, I won't uh, say you can't. In fact, it may be a good thing to do as far as transactions are concerned. But <clears throat> we have a long ways to go and yet the outcome isn't determined. The idea that these elites have, I think they're too arrogant. I think they're too full of hubris. I think that they think that they can just turn a switch on and everybody's going to line up and salute and say, oh yeah, free bags full. Give me that CBDC. I can hardly wait to give you my real ID. Yeah, I don't think it's going to go that well. I think there's going to be a lot of resistance, a lot of rejection. And then what are they going to do? Sort of like going to the illness. You know, not everybody stood in line. Or some people that said, you know what, this thing's experimental and I'm not so sure about it. I'm going to take a wait and see attitude. David, thank you so much for joining us today. Before you head out, could you just let our audience know where they can hear more of your commentary? Absolutely, Cassandra. It is at themorganreport.com. I'm on Twitter at SilverGuru22. I am on LinkedIn. I'm on YouTube at The Morgan Report. But the best thing to do is go to the themorganreport.com and get on our free e-letter list. I put out content three or four times a week. And that's because uh, I never know how long I'm going to be on the mainstream social media channels. I do have backups on most of the other platforms. But I've been getting a lot of correspondence from YouTube recently. So there may be a day where that ends. I don't know. I'm just giving you a warning that uh, the best thing to do is once you're on my server that I own, that's private, uh, we can stay in contact. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for coming on today, David. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We'll be back again tomorrow. But in the meantime, if you could do me a quick favor and just subscribe to our channel below, that would be amazing. Bye.